Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. This is part three of my series, Advice on Buying a Telescope. In part one, I went over the types of telescopes. In part two, I gave you some tips for buying a used telescope. And in this part three, I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the ideal setup, getting a second telescope to complement your first telescope, which, if you followed my advice, was a Dobsonian. <laughs> Often people will ask me, Sula, what kind of telescope should I get? Should I get a refractor or a reflector or should I get this telescope or should I get a 12-inch telescope? And the truth is that I need a lot more information before I can answer that question. Where will you be observing? Is it light polluted? Do you plan to travel with your telescope? What kind of objects do you like to observe? Are you just going to be looking at the moon and the planets? Or do you like to see deep sky objects or wide field objects? How heavy is the telescope? How much can you lift now and when you're old? Will the telescope fit in your car? And what's your budget? And the answers to those questions will determine what kind of telescope you should get. But if you're a beginner in amateur astronomy or looking to buy your first telescope, most astronomers will tell you that the best telescope is a Dobsonian because they cost a fraction of the cost of other types of telescopes, refractors and catadioptric telescopes. So you get a lot of aperture for a very reasonable price. They're easy to set up and use, and you can see a lot with them with all that light gathering capability. But the truth about Dobsonians is that they're big and bulky. I keep my 10 inch Dobsonian attached to a hand truck so I can easily wheel it out to the driveway when I want to observe. They can be difficult to get into your car if you have a passenger car. I love my Dobsonian, they're great telescopes. But if you already own a Dobsonian and you can afford it, then you might consider getting a second telescope to complement your Dobsonian. For example, if it's partly cloudy outside and you're not sure if it's worth it to lug your Dobsonian out, then you might want something smaller in that scenario. Or maybe you want to look at some very large objects, such as NGC 7000, which is so large that it really requires a smaller telescope to see the whole thing. And there are many other deep sky objects like NGC 7000 that require a smaller instrument. Or maybe you want something to use to view the sun with a solar filter. Or maybe you just want something simple and small to pull out and use at times, what some people call a grab-and-go telescope. Well, I think a great complement to a big aperture Dobsonian, an 8-inch or 10-inch, would be a small refractor. Something like a 90 to 100 millimeter refractor would be a perfect pairing with an 8 to 10-inch Dobsonian. Often you can find Dobsonians for sale on Craigslist or eBay or even Astromart for very cheap. Lots of people buy Dobsonians not realizing how big they are or they never take the time to learn how to collimate them, or they can't understand why they can't see anything in the telescope, and it ends up in a closet for sale for cheap. If you're on a tight budget or you're in the market for your first telescope, I highly recommend you look into a used Dobsonian. And for tips on buying a used Dobsonian, you can watch part two of this series, Buying a Used Telescope. You usually will see a few used ones for sale at any given time. And then you can use the rest of the money in your budget to get a second telescope to complement your Dobsonians. Oh, what's that? Excuse me, someone is at the door. I'll be right back. From Katie in Los Altos Hills. What could this be? Oh my lord. Oh, it's a 90 millimeter refractor. 
from my friend Katie. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. A 90 millimeter stellar view. So as I was mentioning, only consider this second telescope refractor if you're able to get the used Dobsonian at a significant discount and you have quite a bit of money left over in your budget because refractors are the most expensive telescope per inch of aperture. And this one is a very high end refractor. And I'm not suggesting that you get this, but this is a, a very nice refractor um, 90 millimeter telescope that would definitely complement your Topsonian, but they're very expensive. And I was actually borrowing this one from my friend Katie and she came and got it in February. My friend Katie is here to get her 90 millimeter Stellar View refractor. It's on this nice Stellar View M002C manual mount. Didn't think I would ever see it again, so let's see what came over Katie. Hey, Sula, it's Katie. I see you're screening your calls. Um, it's been a while since I've seen you. I think the last time I was racing my SUV up your driveway and giving you a culinary. Good times. Um, so, uh, I, I saw that you uh, you had a scope telescope stolen, and I feel really bad about your 90 millimeter Orion telescope getting ripped off. I can't believe it. And um, I've decided to give you one of my 90 millimeter stellar view telescopes. I have four of them and I really only need three. So um, the one I'm giving you was a standard visual version, but I upgraded it to the imaging version. So it comes with a nice thick case. I think they all come with that. Um, a moonlight three inch focuser, the two risers and a full frame field flattener. So I think it'll be pretty set. Um, I also had it. I think it also has that multi coated three element objective lens and a super low uh, dispersion center element. So that's pretty cool. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. 80. Your generosity is overwhelming. Thank you so much. Sorry for getting a little off topic. This is a very high end refractor and I wouldn't suggest in anything like this unless you have a lot of money in your budget or you have an extremely generous friend like my friend Katie. Then by all means, get a high end refractor. Stellar View and Takahashi are considered some of the best if not the best refractors in the world. And they would be a great compliment to your Dobsonian. But what I had in mind was something a lot cheaper. These are very expensive telescopes because they're apo chromatic telescopes. This is a triplet. It has three pieces of glass in it to eliminate false colors. Remember from part one, there are apochromatic refractors and achromatic refractors. Apochromatic refractors like this one have multiple pieces of glass to eliminate false colors and that's what makes them so expensive. But you can get achromatic refractors that'll have one lens or sometimes they'll have two pieces of glass and they're called a doublet and They'll have some false colors, but for visual use, they would be fine, especially if you get a longer focal length. Don't get an achromatic refractor that's a short focal length because it'll have so many false colors, it'll drive you crazy. Personally, I cannot tolerate false colors at all, but a little bit uh, probably won't bother you that much. So if you're going to get an achromatic refractor, get a longer focal length and it, it won't have a lot of false colors and it'll be much cheaper. That's what I had in mind. And there are many options. Uh, SV Boney makes a doublet 100 millimeter telescope that's much, much cheaper than these apochromatic refractors like this one. And if you're just using it for visual use, then it's probably going to be so little false color, uh, you might not even notice. Keep in mind, though, that if you get a refractor for your second telescope, you're going to need a mount to put it on. A lot of them, like this one, just come OTA, optical tube assembly only, and you have to supply a mount. But there are some options where you get the refractor plus a mount. Usually it's an Altaz mount. Just make sure it's a sturdy mount because a wobbly mount will drive you crazy and you won't have any fun using it. <laughs> There's the Polaris from Mead and Orion has the Observer. 
uh, which comes on an equatorial mount. And I think they have another one that comes on an Altaz mount. And there are other companies that make similar refractors that come on a mount as a package. And I think those would be a great complement to your Dobsonian. So that's what I had in mind for your second telescope. An apochromatic refractor would be great if it fits in your budget. It'd be a great second telescope. And they're very compact. And you can easily take them outside as your grab-and-go setup. And if you can't afford an apochromatic, you can get some very high-quality telescopes and an achromat. And those would be a good option, too. And that's what I had in mind for a second telescope for the perfect setup. An 8 or a 10-inch Dobsonian and a 90, 100-millimeter refractor. It can either be on an equatorial mount or an Altaz mount. And that would be a great grab-and-go setup. So that's it for now. I hope you found this useful. I'll see y'all soon. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula. Sarah and all.